there, guys and gals, Rob here with Deluxe Gaming, and welcome back to Space Pirates and Zombies 2. We're now on episode 3, and we've finally found the science conglomerate, and let's just take a look at their faction info here. Uh, let's just go into a little bit more nitty gritty because I want to get an idea of what we really need to do here to become part of their faction. I think I think we need to impress Dr. Toxico. And actually, the last time we looked at Dr. Toxico, he was at 10. So he, we've already improved relationships with him. And I think we need to get him up to around 40 in order to become part of the faction. So and he's the one we need to talk to. I haven't even seen him yet. <laughs> but we built, I think, building that star base for the faction, even though I intended to build it for myself, um, building it for the faction was probably a really good way to improve relationships so we built this for uh, the moon man <laughs> we helped him build it anyway I don't think we built the whole thing I think to build a faction uh, to build a starbase from scratch it's like 4,000 or something so let's get some of the scrap that we didn't get from last time the scavenge from that battle because who knows there might be some good stuff in here sometimes we get you know new shit oh interrupted oh somebody else got it ah stupid oh well that's okay who's that um he's telemarcus isn't he like the leader isn't he the leader of the sun dudes I'm pretty sure that's what all those little symbols on his ship means. Let's go take a look. Uh, faction info. So, uh, the Sun Hunters. I'm pretty sure. Sun, Hold on. Sun Hunters. Here we go. The leader is Mr. Rose. No. Oh. Maybe, maybe it's a Miner's Conglomerate, maybe? Void, no. Uh, Lone, Sovereignty, Miner's Conglomerate. Telemarchus. Yeah, so Telemarchus. Look at that. He's got the little his little crowns around him. That's cool. So he is uh, he's level 30. He, we have a negative relationship with him. It's, it's only slightly negative. But what is he doing in this territory? That means that the Minus Conglomerate must be close to the uh, science guys. Hold on. I just want to see something else. Yeah, the Sovereignty of Science. I keep calling, this, calling them the Science Conglomerate. But it's the Sovereignty of Science. Science! Yo, science! <laughs> um, so we're going to follow these guys around and we're going to build our relationship with them and then eventually become friends. Titan Gates. Let's take a look. I'm actually really enjoying the the info, like the, the the lore. It's actually really quite cool. The Titan Gates were created late during the lockdown wars. Their intended function was to further segregate the inner and outer worlds as an unbreakable gate. Instead of using an encrypted key code, Titan Gates had absolutely no power source, requiring it to be spooled up manually by an energy beam transfer. The beam itself was encoded to ensure that even if one was to amass the astronomical power needed, it would still to silo access. <laughs> For a time, the Titan Gates were successful, until Carl Manfred devised a way to use the Clockworks Deflector Array as an accessor, resulting in the now famous Breach Incident. Interesting. So the Clockwork, what, what is the Clockwork again? Uh, did we have we have we been to that? I don't think we've actually done any had had any information about the Clockwork. I know Don Gibson built this Clockwork, and I think it was a mothership. So we're, we're getting there. We're breaking this all down. Eventually, it's all going to connect and it's going to make sense. But right now, it's a little confusing. How are we doing for goons? We're fine. We've got about 3,000 scrap. We need more. We need way more. Let's let's go. Uh, just kind of keep an eye. On, oh, let's. Oh, no, we're not going to bother. I'm only going to help the science, the sovereignty of science guys now. I think that's what we're going to focus on. We have 10 threat. We're already 10 threat. Actually, our ship is pretty good, although it's kind of a ragtag. Like, it's just mashed together of a number of things. So here's... This is on the sovereignty of science. And something just happened. Zombies are starting to get more Following angry. Following <laughs> the dark infection, a few scientists established a group dedicated to the investigation of the dark entity. They reached out to the best and brightest survivors the Void had to offer. Unfortunately, they were plagued by constant bandit attacks until they enacted a minimal contact policy with other factions. Now they cling to life like the rest of the galaxy, having all but given up on the scientific endeavors it was founded upon. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I. They seem a little underdoggy too, as well. I'm, I'm all for the so sovereignty of science. I'm all about uh, learning and growing and that kind of thing. And I hope that kind of fits in. So, uh, Void Militia declared war on the civilian ascendancy. All right, so let's just keep collecting stuff here. Oh, a level ten bandit. Okay. Um, will he attack us? Actually, I think are we? We're not level five yet. We're still only level four. So, <laughs> um, as soon as we hit level five, by the way. Um, they, the bandits can attack us, so let's help this guy out. Who is he? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Captain Kelvin. He's a neutral. So, like, helping just random neutral guys is good, too, because eventually when we start our own faction, which I'm hoping to do, 
Um, that could be really good for us in terms of getting new people. Oh look, we've got some. Our little, our little, uh, our little strike craft there is actually helping us uh, by shooting down some of the uh, the missiles and stuff that were coming our way. That was really cool, actually. So it's a PD ship. That's a little PD ship. So I, I wonder if it just randomly picks out a strike craft that we have. We do have quite a bit of strike craft available to us. Um, I'm just going gangbusters on this guy. I'm more or less ignoring the other ships right now. We can't fire when we boost our shields. Okay, so now we're reloading. Oh man, we almost penetrated. Uh, we did penetrate into the hull here, but he's rebuilding his shields right now, and we're we, we've got to reload. Like we have no choice. Oh, this this thing we could get some we could get some hull from that thing, but okay. Fire sh his shields. Oh, our shields are down. Let's maybe get out of here. Let's take out. We should be taking out the. Um, of course, the strike craft, the enemy strike craft. We, we're not following my own rules here. <laughs> All right, fire, 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 fire. Oh no, we lost our engine. That's not good. Um, sometimes you can recover it. All right, fire, fire, fire. There we go, done. We lost our engine. Fortunately, I think we still have a, a junk one kicking around. So all we have to do is destroy these strike craft, and we're okay. But we're reloading, and we can't move. We cannot move. We just we still have strike craft, so maybe they can help. Wow, that was tougher than I expected. Where's the friendlies? Did the friendlies die too? They must have died. They must have got their, their butt kicked or something. Who's shooting at us? Somebody else was shooting at us too as well. All right. Area clear. Okay, so, wow. We took a lot of damage there. We lost a couple wing parts. I think those are our wings over there. Can we get them from here? We can. I don't know if we can actually... Yeah, we can put them on our ship like like this. But let's go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> that was not a great battle, but we survived. Any battle you survive is a good battle. Next time, we need to go for... We Priority is we need to go... Oh, look, we have no engines. Oh, no. Okay. So I think it's always good to keep a junk engine with us, too. <gasps> Can we not move at all? Oh no! So, what do we do? We have no engines. Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> uh, we have no engines. Okay, let's let's go back. I thought we had a I thought we had a junk engine carrying a junk engine with us. Can I trade with this guy? Can I trade? Can you can you buy me an engine, dude? I need an engine. Can, can I move at all? I, I, oh, oh, maybe we can repair the engine. Oh, it's going to cost us 52 goons to repair. <gasps> did we repair our engine? We did not. We still have no engine, but we can move. So we need to get to a place that sells engines uh, kind of stat now. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, that's interesting. That's too bad, but it's, it's interesting. Anyway, can we grab this stuff? Maybe he's probably already scavenged it all. We lost a health. What did we lose a health for? Okay, we harvested that. Let's harvest again. Okay, so let's try and get to a starbase and buy an engine. So they... So, uh, we're using... We're traveling slower, and we're using way more res to travel because we don't have a proper engine. So let's... Hopefully we can buy an engine here. The, the markup's 122%, but we've, we've got to do it, right? We have no choice. Interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, learn, lesson to be learned there, always keep a spare engine with you. So, and we can also have four cores now, so we could theoretically, uh, we could change our ship around too. We forgot to do that. So, do you guys have any engines? Comstomp, that's a nose. These are all noses. They don't actually have any engines for sale here. Oh, no. Oh, actually, there is another. Uh, so, sometimes you can go and there is a, sometimes they have a jettison, uh, junkyard. That's it. And you can go and just grab a junk engine. So this is our starter engine. Yeah, perfect. Cool. There we go. We've got one of our starter engines. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so you're never actually, you know, totally lost. If, if you if you lose a part and you and you don't have the money to replace it, you can always just go back to a starbase and grab one of the junk ones. So that's okay. So let's go. Let's repair a ship. I think it's cheaper to repair it actually at the starbase. Um, let's go. Hmm. Oh, we can join the faction already. Oh, cool. Let's do it! We are now we're gonna be part of the science sovereignty of science. Welcome to the family. Ah, do right by us, and we'll be do, do right by you. So we, we, that last little battle brought us up to friendly thirty. So that's really good. Excellent. We were friendly thir fifteen, and then we went up to uh, we we gained another fifteen, and that should improve our markup too as well. So cool. That's really awesome. I wonder if we get better rewards for doing the. No, I think the rewards are the same for doing these battles. We might do some more of those later, but I'm not interested in that right now. Let's go to trade. Uh, do we? What nose cone do we have? 
Or what nose do we have? We've got the dinghy, which is a, a missile that does damage to hull, but, I mean, to health, but that doesn't help because we still got to get through armor and stuff. What I would really like is a missile that did damage to shields. Or even a better laser, that might be better choice. Because we end up doing lots of close combat too as well. So, oh, there's this one. This is a, this is probably, this is a laser. This is a laser as well, but it's one DPS. This one is uh, one DPS. And now with the ones with the little stars on them give us a little bit of a bonus. So we can actually compare that to our current one. So we can actually right click on this one, which is pretty good. It's a three star part. So I don't know. How, I don't know if they actually get better at the longer you use them or something, or they just, they're just automatically level three or whatever. So for us to replace this might be kind of silly, but uh, because if you look here, so you can actually see the comparison. So if we took the dro the droop, we'd actually lose 15 points of health. We lose 4.8 hammers, whatever that means. And uh, we'd lose some of our turn radius too as well. So yeah, but we'd gain we'd gain some we'd gain some shields and some other stuff, but I think we're better off just keeping the dinghy for our nose. So that's cool. Um we could sell some res here, maybe just, you know, unload a little bit. Uh we do have some extra parts, I wonder that we should maybe get rid of. The retro, no, that's our old, that's the new engine. We could sell some of these extra strike craft. Like we're carrying around a lot of strike craft. Let's sell some of the, the lighter ones. We'll trade that off. We'll trade that off. Just some of the lighter ones, just because I don't know, we don't need that many, I don't think. I mean, I'm not really paying too close of attention, and we're probably gonna uh, we're gonna help these guys out in every way possible. Notice we're now blue because we're now part of the sovereignty of science, and we only have 60 minutes left before the zombies attack. So yeah, let's fight. Let's let's defend our our area against the uh, miners conglomerate or whatever they are. I think that's the miners. Perfect. And yeah, it should be a piece of cake. Should be a piece of cake. So yeah, our, with the old with the old junky. Uh, the old junkie engine on it, I think it, or the old, the old junkie engine on this, I think it's just more missiles. We have a lot of missiles. <laughs> we have more than enough missiles. Fire, fire! Oh yes. So it looks like we have to manually control those those big cannons, which is fine. But if as long as we're on number one, everything will kind of auto fire. It's it's really convenient and easy to use. But I wonder if there's got to be a downside to it. I think you probably fire maybe a bit slower or something. Yeah, that was nice. That was good. Those missiles are awesome. They're really good. Perfect. Star map. So, of course, that improves relationships with everybody. Good. And let's just keep moving on. Let's uh, let's build. Now we can maybe start thinking about building our own starbase. I wonder. Let's just go see. Because I think now if we build a starbase, it'll be in our name. Or maybe we have to be part of our own faction to build our own starbases. Because if we... Oh, 4,500. Claim this location by erecting a starbase. But will that do it for me like will that be for me i don't think it will i think it would just be for the faction be randomly pick who who gets who gets to own the starbase or something i don't know i don't know i guess we'll find out we don't have enough money to do it right now Area anyway we well, have 36 35 65 Area. which is a fair amount Ooh, void okay oh there's some info i love these these are so good the lore is so good i almost want to use my own voice versus the computer generated voice though <laughs> Just because, I don't know, I could make it much more fun. But that's okay. We'll stick with the, the computer-generated voice for now. It's acceptable. It is impossible to say for sure where the dark entity came from. Some believe it existed before time itself. Others believe it is responsible for maintaining the precarious cosmological constant through its will alone. Regardless, it is now known that the resource res stems entirely from this creature. While the entity cannot normally be physically observed, it does have a direct effect on the universe around it flooding space with res. The function of res serves to attract technologically advanced species toward the creature, where they then can be corrupted by the dark infection. Okay, res serves to attract technology advanced species toward the creature where they can be corrupted by the dark infection. So this is the source of the dark infection too as well. And I guess you could you could say that that explained dark energy too, if, if you believe in that kind of thing. I mean, I mean, in this universe, right? I, I, I think there's something to dark energy, but I think right now dark energy is just a magical word for something we don't understand. And in the, in the real world. <laughs> All right, so let's... Uh... Okay, so I, I'm really I'm really happy to map out this area so I know what we're dealing with too. Besides that, once you've got something mapped out, it stays mapped out. So you can see the whole universe once it's all opened up. History of warp. Cool. Without the warp gates, interstellar travel was not possible. Along with the discovery of new habitable worlds, several new elements were added to the periodic table. One of these was element 126 the element now known as res. 
As warp gate travel became commonplace, a massive number of gate builder ships were deployed. Over a millennium, a galactic warp gate network was established, and gate travel was an everyday occurrence. Hmm. Okay. Not really much information there, but I mean, it's something. So we get two more of those brief histories of warp. Cool. All right, so let's go... As, uh, threat 20 so as soon as we as soon as we're capable of it i want to start attacking bases and stuff like some of the pirate bases and stuff because i'm sure we're going to get tons of experience for that just uh, every once in a while i want to randomly hit people up and see if i can trade with them you know trade some of the extra ex extra dudes we have oh no he has no money so that's fine whatever it doesn't matter uh so this is this is the uh hold on i it's i get confused with that's the miners conglomerate so sometimes they look yellow but and sometimes they look orange like it looks kind of yellowy orange that's why it's a little confusing the sun hunters are the sun guys are yellow and the miners they are orange but it kind of changes its tone sometimes it seems like it see that seems a little yellow as well as orange i don't know <laughs> maybe i'm just i don't know having trouble with colors i i failed colors in kindergarten maybe i don't know <laughs> all right let's go explore this the dark entity scan and view cool did we just do that one After the discovery oh. of an ancient alien warp gate, it was theorized that the dark entity had previously cleansed the galaxy of all life, reseeding it afterward for later consumption. Oh. This process may also have been a reoccurring cycle, to which the creation of all life originated. While the builders of the ancient gate were long extinct, humanity was successful in refurbishing it. It led to a twisted dimension where the dark entity's physical body resided. With the location of its corporeal form now accessible, it succumbed to a flurry of bullets and bombs <laughs> not unlike the life forms humanity was previously familiar with. So, every so often this thing creates life so that it can consume it later. So, it's it's basically culling the fields right now. And I think that's, that's, that's the sort, the zombies are actually just, they're eating. They're consuming. It's consuming it all. So, interesting. Really interesting. So, are we, hold on. We need to also see, are we at war with anybody? Um, oops, that's not the right button. <laughs> Let's hit the right button. Yay! Uh, uh, yay for right buttons. Okay, so we are at war with the Miners Conglomerate. So we're pretty lucky because we are they can't attack us right now until we're level 5, but that's right around the corner. We're also at war with the Civilian Ascendancy. So maybe we shouldn't be hanging around. Actually, if we're going to scout, now's the time. We're almost level 5. As soon as we're level 5, they can attack us freely. Like, these guys can just come attack us, and we're at war, so <laughs> they're, they'll have a field day on my corpse. Um, in the meantime, let's go attack this pirate. Pirates. You can never reason with a bandit. In fact, I yeah, don't yeah, yeah, think yeah. they even understand the basic language and- Do I want to reason with them? I will join join the fight against- Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got- We've got an infection. We've got an infected asteroid. Oh no! So there's 20% as time goes on, we're going to see more and more of this. So we've got an infected asteroid that will continue to hash zombie ships at us. So we have to destroy the asteroid to prevent it from producing any more zombie ships. Are we not hitting this thing? Like, okay, I guess we were, but maybe it had a little bit of shield on it or something. Okay, let's fire, 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 fire. Just kill it. We'll kill a couple of these guys and then we'll go kill the big bad guy. Then we'll come back and we'll kill the zombie asteroid. I don't know how much of a threat they are. I mean, Oh, let's get the shield. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Get the shield. Get the shield. Come on. Come on. There we go. Perfect shield. Yes. I love that power up. <laughs> um, there we go. Where's the rest of the bad guys? There we go. Right here. Let's kill this guy. Now, uh, the only way to stop those zombies from hatching is to kill the asteroid. The zombie, the infected zombie asteroid. I don't know why or how that thing happens, but uh, apparently the asteroids can get infected with zombies. So now, area clear. Okay, good. So did we kill the zombie asteroid? I don't think so. It's interesting. So it looks like it maybe did get killed. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. All right, let's go back. <laughs> Excellent. We won the battle. That's all that matters. We won. We will take all. Perfect. Excellent. Let's go grab. Let's grab these goons. See, I, I need to understand this whole thing. So it's saying that we can build a miner's conglomerate. Uh-oh. Zombie incubation. 50%. Uh, so we're now at 14 minutes, well, 15 minutes before the zombies actually attack. No, we've we used up 50% of our free time. I think we've come a long way, um, but as soon as we reach the next level, we could potentially be attacked by the miners conglomerate too as well. So we kind of want to get out of here because look at this. We're, we're like on the verge of level five. Level up. There we go. While you were sleeping, I connected the data analyzer system to your cerebral cortex. <laughs> if you select the incorrect button, your brain functions will cease and you will die. No pressure. <laughs> what? 
What? Why would you say that? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, shield strength plus 20. That looks like the way to go here. We've gone with hull. We've got hull, armor, and now shield strength. I think all of that is good stuff. So we're a little, we're very tanky. I like being tanky. Now we can take a lot of hits. That uh, That's actually a really great thing. So we'll get this res too as well. So now we can be attacked by enemies. So not only can we attack things, things can actually come out of, go out of their way to attack us. And we are still at war with the Miners Conglomerate. Ooh, let's go defend our base. Yes. Oh, who's attacking? Oh, it looks like, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's defend our star base though. Uh, transport? Is that what's being attacked? Nope. We need to figure out who's being attacked here. Uh, the starbase? You are not being attacked. Nope. Who's attacking who? Duke Starship? Nope. <laughs> uh, the Drifter? Nope. Who's attacking? Robbie? Nope. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea who's attacking who here. I thought I was going to get into a nice big fight. <laughs> That's okay. Let's go explore over here. So now even other captains, just random captains that don't like us can attack us just for fun. <laughs> We're like sport for everybody now. Uh, so that's kind of bad. Oh, oh, big battle. Oh, wait, hold on. This, so this is the leader. Oh man, the miners conglomerate declared peace with, oh no. So, but we could still maybe go and try and do this. This might be too much though. So Telemarchus, he is threat level 35. We've got a friendly here guy. This is friendly guy, friendly here guy, English hard. <laughs> We've got Mr. Poner, I love that. Mr. Poner, he's friendly. He's, he's part of the friendly, but he's still fighting with the leader. I wonder if we kill the leader, what happens to the minor conglomerate? Let's let's join the fight. Uh, this might be this might be too risky. <laughs> oh, it looks like somebody else jumped in too. So we've got, we're teaming up on this guy. He's probably going to try and escape. Let's get him. Let's get him. To battle. On the cannons. Oh, oh, shields. He's probably really tough compared to me, so we do need to be a little bit careful. Fire! Fire everything! We're gonna kind of... We're gonna do drive-bys. <laughs> we're gonna do drive-bys. There is some some strike crap that maybe we should worry about too, but it looks like he might be heading for the the escape. He's, he's, he's gonna try and escape. That's exactly what he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. So I'm using my shields when those missiles come in. Fire! Fire! Okay, we're reloading. I want to sort of stop him. There's no way. We don't think we have the firepower to deal with him. Like... I, I, it's great that I'm, you know, I'm feeling confident enough to try and fight these guys that are level 30 and stuff, but I don't think, yeah, he is, he is actually officially trying to escape. So let's destroy the rest of his straight craft and let's just let him go because, um, yeah, we don't stand a chance. Not a chance at all. Oh, look, there's, ah, we've got an infected asteroid again. Uh, I'm assuming that we're going to start to see more and more of this stuff. Uh, destroy the little infected guys. Cool. And let's get rid of this this asteroid because as long as the asteroid exists, I believe that they can just keep spawning. So destroy the asteroid. <laughs> that was a very reckless battle, by the way. I shouldn't be going out of my way to help people destroy level 35 guys because if he decided to kill us, we'd be dead. There, asteroid's dead. Perfect. So there we go. Let's turn around here. Excellent. Done deal. Is that it? Everybody's gone. All right, cool. So we caused him to flee, but now we're no longer at war with, with the Modest Conglomerate, but we also made friends with Mr. Poner there. Because uh, I love his hat. His hat is great. <laughs> he's the reason I joined this faction. It's because he's got awesome hat and sunglasses. Can I actually claim this? I can! Yay. All right, scavenge. Hopefully, oh, 627 s salvage for that. Sun Hunters now declared uh, war with Void Militia. I love that things sort of ongo There's this ongoing... Uh, wow, we made a ton of scavenge from that. Like a ton of salvage? That was amazing. Interrupted. Cool. Yeah, we're up to 42. We can probably buy some cool stuff now. Let's go see. We need a new engine, and maybe we might reconfigure our ship now that we can too as well, because we, we can actually add another core too. So let's repair our ship. Free. Perfect. Um, fund expansion. I don't want to... So we can make our we can make their star bases better, but I, I want my own star base. I don't want their star bases. I don't want their stinky star bases. <laughs> I want my own. Let's go to trade. Let's see what they got. Do they have any engines? Ah, <sighs> some strike craft. There's no engines. Okay, well, let's replace some of our... We can add another core. What kind of cores do you guys have? So we can compare their cores to our current cores. So we've got habitat decks, but we only have two of those, and I think we're actually... We can add two cores, I think. Right now we're sitting at two plus, so we can add one more core. So let's add, let's see, let's see what we got here. So we've got the mulch core. 
we're comparing it with the habitat decks that we currently have. So the multicore is not doesn't give us quite the health for our ships. So we're not as beefy with that, but it does give us more hammers. Don't know what that means. <laughs> um, the watch spire gives us better turn rate and faster speed. Actually, that's really good. I like that. And then the brick post just gives us more shields. Substantially more shields, actually, because it's plus 2.4. That's really good. Do we want more shields or more turn and engines? I think we're going to go for more turn and engines. I like the ability to just kind of run away. I think is a really good plan. So we're going to grab that. And uh, we still have some junk. We've got some junk. We've got a junk left. Let's see what we can replace that with. A mandolin left. Um, these, I, I do like the cannons. I like the cannons. I don't know why. I really like them. I almost want to replace so, the, some of the missiles with just the generic cannons. Uh, because the cannons do lots of damage to armor and stuff, and and then we could do lasers and cannons. That'd be really good, or or some kind of um, some kind of missile that destroys shields would be really even better. I would like that a lot. So let's do mandolin left. Let's get rid of our one or our hairpin left, which is our junk part. Let's replace that. So we can actually select this and select the one you want to buy, and that will just swap them. So you don't even have to put it on your ship, and then it'll it'll uh, give you the difference in trade. Uh, because the junk part's not worth worth anything, we're not getting anything back for it. So there we go. And then our mandal our right side. Let's see. We've got no junk parts on the right, but let's get rid of. We've got too many missiles here. I think we'll keep we'll keep this laser. We'll change out this this mandolin right with something with a laser, a direct fire emitter. Oh, and this one's a two star. So this one has all sorts of bonuses. Look at this. We'll compare this to the missile. It's so much better. Wow, but it's it's short range and it's good for destroying shields. And that's exactly what we want right now. I want lots of, so the right side of our ship is more about destroying shields and the left side's more about destroying armor. <laughs> so we gotta keep that in mind when we're flying. And actually I would love to have all lasers on the right side that, and we could totally make use of that. That would be really cool. So, and I think we're fine for strike craft. We could maybe even sell some of our strike craft again. We, we, we collect a lot of it. So the yacht weak, uh, equipped with weak beams and strong missiles. Yeah. Um, the gimp. Uh, shotgun, we can. Let's sell that. Uh, that's good. We'll keep everything else. I like the tugs. I like the rangers. The rangers have the ton of missiles, which is great. All right, so good. And let's go and build our ship. Uh, this is the best part of the game. Now, what I'm... Oh, you know what we could do? Just thought about it. Actually, we, as soon as we have, as soon as we find a place that we can buy more engines and stuff, um, we might change our ship configuration, like drastically shape our, change our ship configuration. What we could do... Ah, uh, we're out of time. That's okay. That's okay. Turn off. Turn off the timer. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know. You know me and timers. That uh, doesn't really work too well. All right. So we've got the two habitats. And we're going to add on to that. What we could do is we could. Yeah. Now we kind of got an odd number now. Stuff. See, we could. We could. We don't have to make it in a line like that. We could. We could. We could change the design. I love the versatility of this. Somebody was saying it reminded them of Captain Forever. It does. It totally does. It reminds me of Captain Forever. So in other words, if we had a lot of noses, we could put a whole bunch of noses there and a lot of engines and then have two wings. But since we have an abundance of wings, that's not going to work. So I think we're going to have to stick with a longer design. We'll do the two habitats. Habitats give us a lot of health, which is really great. And then this one gives us a little bit more thrust. So I, we'll put that in the back. We could kind of do an oddly shaped shift. So what we could do is have it on the side like that and then do, okay, so line of sight's probably a thing. So we'll do the, we've got a missile. Yeah, let's do the, oh, here, well, I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this thing on the left side. Whoops, not there. I know it's gonna make our ship look kind of funny, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. And we'll do the missile right on the outer edge and then we'll do the two uh, cannons, like so, and then we're gonna do, of course, the engine. We could add another engine to this ship now, which is really cool. And then uh, we'll do the cannons, lasers up front, and then the cannon in the back. I would ideally have three lasers on the right side, and then cannons on the left side. I don't know. That would just make it easier for you know when I'm in combat. Like I face my enemy on the right side, like I do a right side broadside, and then I do a left side broadside. So I like that. It's all right. It's it's kind of clunky right now, but we we can only expect clunky for a while. Uh, I mean that's that's the. I mean of course we're gonna have clunky for a while. I mean maybe we should go visit now that we're not at war with. Oh, somebody's not happy with something. Miners conglomerate declared war again with the sovereignty of science. They're trying to kill Telemarchus here. They're really trying to kill Telemarchus. I don't think we're ready to fight him though. 
Uh, I don't think so. I would like to do some trading with the miners' conglomerate. That would be really nice. We are out of time officially. Maybe, maybe we should make tr personally make friends with the miners' conglomerate so we can trade with some of their star bases. We'll ransack that for sure. Resource acquired. And maybe uh, we're going into enemy territory here. This is dangerous. Don't ever do this. Let's let's get this last info, and then we will call an episode. I, I like to ep end my episodes with a nice big battle, but I mean we've been having lots of battles. That's fine. I like the, the the lore is just as exciting to me. After the warp gate collapse, many scientific minds stepped forward to resolve the galactic transportation crisis. While the res drive became the primary method for travel, a second warp gate network was also under heavy construction. These new warp gates were smaller and more efficient, being derived from the alien technology discovered at the galaxy core. Trillions of these new warp gates were deployed using a gateless warp slipstream device scattering them randomly across the galaxy. It wasn't until the network was nearly completed, did their critical flaw become apparent. The quantum entangled compounds of the new gates began to interfere with each other, even across the span of light years. The more gates, the more the problem compounded itself. This interference caused the warp jumps to exit randomly within a <laughs> short distance of the gate's location, rendering the gates useless for practical use. The company abandoned the new gate project, leaving the failed gate still somewhat active. The slipstream device, however, became the prototype for the res drive all starships use today. One advantage the fail gates retain even now, is the speed in which the warp field can be instantiated. Ships have been known to utilize the random slipstream dumps as a method to flee attacking ships, rather than risk spooling up the so res drive. Yeah, so the fail gates are what, when you go into a battle, you can actually fly to a fail gate and escape. So I like how they have the multiple meanings for that. So they're failed gates. They used to be full-fledged gates that you could travel with, like really travel with, but they can't, they're failed. They, 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 they no longer work like that, but they can still, you can still use them to escape uh, an, an event, like a battle. You can still use them to escape a battle. So that's kind of cool. I actually like that. I like the multiple meanings of stuff. The lore is amazing in this game. It's so good. All right, so let's go. I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to call that an episode. I I, I could just keep playing, but I, I don't want my episodes to be too much longer than 30 minutes. It's already longer than 30 minutes. But anyway, I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, this is super fun. I'm really enjoying Space Pirates and Zombies too. And we'll be back again in uh, in a short while. All right, take care.